Hey, welcome back guys. I'm The Down With Doug. Thanks for joining me once again. So you made it through 19.2, well done. If you're anything like me, uh, you may have hit some PBs, but boy, it was not pretty. Uh, the technique on those cleans by the end was, uh, I hope I never see them again. But it's, um, it is fun just to test yourself in that arena. I did a motion training in my home gym in Soberton, and uh, the crowd atmosphere is, is something else. It really gets you going. Um, on the converse side, although that's very good, unfortunately, it can leave you a little bit stiffer than you're used to. So today we're going to deal with that in today's 19.2 15 minute fix. So we'll see you on the mat in just a second. Grab yourself two blocks and get ready. Okay, so we're actually going to start on the ground here, just mobilizing those hips. Uh, maybe they're a little bit stiff after what's going on. So just bring yourself into this kind of straddle position with the knees up, and then we're just rocking hips side, up, side, swaying them side to side. Hands behind you just to add a little bit of support as you rock side to side. See if you can come up with that one leg at a time, then bring the other leg in, drop this leg in, bring it up as far as you can, then bring the other leg up down. If you want, if you're feeling fancy, hands come off the ground. Yeah, so fancy. Down. And then this time we come up, we bow down over that leg. I find that really difficult still. Up, cross over, down. This side's a little bit easier. Cross, round, down, and one more. Up, and down, and cross down. For some reason, if anyone's the same as me, I scoop my way forward like a, a dog with worms by the end. From here, press into that right foot. Step yourself back into a down dog. Just loosen out those legs. I'm going to spend a bit of time just mobilizing things first, just getting into the joints. Left leg can come up. Step it forward. Step that right knee down. I'm going to cover my belly up a little bit here. From here, bring your weight to rest into this left leg. And we exhale, lean back. Inhale, rock forward. Exhale, lean back, straighten that leg, stay connected. And again, just coming to this hip and hamstring on this side. Start to bring some motion into it. You may be feeling quite stiff after all of that pretty heavy lifting relative to our side. All right, this one I got from Mobility Wad. And uh, after having some problems with my hips before, I found this really helped. So the reason I said you have the blocks, it gives you something just to lean on to. You might not need it. Grab your foot with your right hand. Drop that right elbow down. And again, you can just start to move back and forward into this leg. Try to keep the heel of that left leg down or left foot, as well as the blade edge to rock yourself back and forward. From here, I start to twist my whole torso towards that leg, pushing that left knee out to the side. Opening up, again, leaning back and forward. When I lean back here, I can kind of feel a little bit more. So we're le thinking less of these cold stretches here and more just a little bit of mobility work first. Come all the way down, lean forward. Find your pressure point. Find where it's going to open up. I put my hips to the side, in, out, and back round. All right. From here, raise yourself up. Just turn the torso to the inside of the leg now, facing the belly button almost at 45 degrees away. You can hang out here, or again, you start to lean back and forward. I find doing this gives me a little more insight into what's happening specifically with my body, which can be quite a nice way to get to know your body and how it works. And again, no kind of right or wrong here. Just try to keep the foot flat on the left side as you move your hip side to side and the torso face 45 degrees away from the left foot. Okay, very nice. From here, hands walk around to the side, bring the toes up, just come to wide leg forward fold for a moment. Just hang heavy, rock yourself again. Nice freedom of movement, bending the knees, straightening as you go, finding a bit of life back in those hips. Walk all the way across. Right leg now comes down, drop back, knee down. Bring our block in here. Again, left elbow can come on to the block as we grab our right foot. Right hand can push into this right knee. And again, just rock yourself backwards and forwards, finding those gristle areas of the leg. 
back and forward, maybe out to the side. I turn my torso now up towards the right, dropping the hips down, see how that feels. Oof, a lot of work to go into here. Glutes really tight after that workout, as well as the lower back and the chest, not so much more in the back and the lats, and we're gonna get to that right at the end of the session. Keep pressing up, oh, feel that opening. It's quite nice, to, again, just to explore these positions. Bring yourself up now. Hands come 45 degrees away from the body. And again, you can either drop the hips as you pull the chest up, or you straighten that leg and bend. Straighten that leg and bend, which reminds me, we still need to do that on this side. Here we go. Again, being explorative, waking up those legs, just making them push through maybe positions that they're a little bit sticky in after we do those heavier workouts. I did really enjoy this one, but it's definitely not my forte, the, uh, the heavy lifting. It's quite new to me, the power lifting part. So um, as you get tired, obviously the technique goes, which, uh, which can really come back to haunt you by the end. All right, we bring the hands either side of the foot this time. Chest leans on that right leg. And again, we keep it connected. Inhale forward, exhale, reach back. Inhale forward. Exhale, reach back, lovely, nice opener on that hamstring. Even though the leg doesn't get totally straight, you still completely feel it in there. From here, now bring some life, moving that hip around in its joint, going side to side, making circles. Again, just keeping it nice and free, again, to know your body and the places it likes to move and maybe the places it doesn't like to move at the moment. Bring the hands back around, tuck those back toes under, lift it up, Come back into your wide-legged forward fold. Again, a little bit of freedom, moving side to side, opening up those hips once again. Very complex structure, the hips, so we do need to take our time to look after it. From here, I would bring right leg through, sit down, nice and easy. Now we're coming to the right leg first, so you can see this first. From here, we pick up the foot, left hand grabs on to the blade edge of the right, Credit it like a baby, just rock it side to side. Again, bringing that movement in. A lot less static stretching here. This can be a really nice position just to be in. If you want more, you can thread the right arm through the gap. Grab onto the blade edge again. Oof. It can be really nice just to bring some freedom where the leg can relax and you can manipulate it yourself. Cheaper than an osteo. But if you do need to see the osteo, I'm just going to a big shout out here to Dom osteotherapy in London. He's also part of a Surbiton Motion Fit, um, and he is a great guy. A lot of us stunt guys swear by him. All right, that's enough of that plug. Left hand, grab onto the blade edge again. Right hand reaches back, lean onto your right hip, and now Patrick Beach calls this the all or nothing stretch. It's basically foam rolling without the roller or the ball. If you can lean yourself into the right position and pull this leg back, you can often find a nice bit of juicy myofascial release, which I'm getting here, which makes it a little bit harder to talk while we do this. This is really nice for this position. So again, we release that all off, rocking back and forward. And from here, bend that left leg in. You can bring your back onto the mat this time. Right hand threads through, grab onto that knee, lean back, coming to our reclined pigeon. A nice way to stretch off through this right glute. This time we are going for more of a static stretch. Four breaths here, inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. Last one, inhale and exhale. Now keep the legs oriented as they are in this figure four position. From here I drop both knees over to the right Left arm reaches out to the left. Right hand can go where it needs to. I kind of like to bring it on the belly so I can feel that stretch that's coming through the lumbar as well as the legs. This can be a nice stretch also on that left hip and using that right foot just to add a little bit more weight to come through that spinal twist. Inhale. Exhale, see if you can just twist a little bit more. Inhale. And exhale. One more inhale. And exhale. Keep the legs orientated as they are. Inhale up. This time, 
drop the right heel and foot to the mat. Bring the right hand out to the right. You can grab onto the right ankle with the left hand. Right knee keeps pressing away, so note the right knee will want to collapse here. Keep pressing it away, keep reaching with your right hand. This can be a nice stretch out to the QL, the obliques on the right side. Quite an unusual stretch in the hip too. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Very nice. Bring the legs up. Now you can rock your way up, back to seated. Now come into the other side. Blade edge of that left foot caught by your right hand. Give those a few sways side to side here. When that feels all and good, left arm sweeps underneath. This is also your setup for eight limb pose, so be aware if you can get this, then you're good for that position. That's a good setup anyway. From here, make sure we got that connection with the foot. Left hand leans back. We start to lean back. Oh, and you see I'm hitting that my fascia release straight away. Be aware that you might have to pull this foot leg in. That can intensify the stretch. And you just have to roll about a little bit to find where that is. And like I said, it's a nice, nice release off there. Rock side to side. Oh, whee. From here, bring that right leg in. Slowly bring yourself down. Press into that thigh. We thread it through. I like to hold onto the foot and on top of the knee. Whatever you do, just get a good connection on that right leg. Keep pushing the left hip forward. Pull the right hip back in space. Oof. Always such a nice stretch, the glutes. For me, it's always a problem area. I say problem, it's just a tight area in general, so I like to enjoy this. Four more breaths, inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale. And exhale. The last one. Inhale. And exhale. Release the legs down. Keep that figure four orientation. Let both knees now fall over to the left. You look out to your right. Let the hips really collapse down. Use the weight of that left ankle on top of that right knee just to pull your spine in one direction while you look towards the other. Nice variation of this lumbar twist. Again, the back might be really feeling it after all of those cleans, especially if the technique like mine wasn't great. This is a nice way just to bring some life back into that back. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, bring the legs back up to center. Keep this orientation. You might be able to see better this side. Left foot comes down. Right hand can grab left ankle. Left arm reaches out to the left. Woof, this is such a good stretch. Those obliques and the lumbar. And keep drawing this left knee out towards the left. Don't let it fall in. Keep pulling it out. Keep that connection with the right hand on the left ankle. Inhale. Exhale. Let that twist happen. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. All right. Draw those legs up now. You can rock yourself up. I'm just going to come to this hot opener. Two blocks. One block comes between the shoulder blades. Line back on it like so. This block then can come onto any setting you want, either to the top setting like that, or the mid setting, which might be more comfortable. Bring the hands out to the mat, and you're just going to spend a few minutes with this hot opener. Hands up just means we externally rotate the shoulders so we open up that chest. Relaxing off those shoulders. And this other block right here under the thoracic part just opens all of that up. It might be a bit tight after leaning forward. Again, like I said, once we get tired, our technique goes out the window. At least mine does. I can't speak for you. So just taking the thoracic into a nice, more, a much more open position while we relax means that we can focus on just the breath and let gravity do its work. Obviously, we're limited time while we're doing this video, mainly because of the title is 15 minute fix, so really it's my own fault. But if you have more time, this can be a really nice way to chill out, just to be a corrective, 
corrective pose for your posture. Spending a couple of minutes a day. I usually try to do about five minutes, opening this up just to get that chest night and wide and the shoulders to relax. We're so forward dominant in our shoulders, especially if we do a lot of office work or on our phones a lot. This is a nice way just to chill out. Take a moment to scan the body, make sure everything else is switched off and really try to relax. Close the eyes if that feels good. And just bring some nourishment back into the body. All right, now I would suggest staying here for longer. We're going to call it quits now because we are approaching that 15 minute area. So stay like this if you want for a little bit longer and just try get into the breath and enjoy that a little bit more. Well done for making it through 90.2. I hope this has been helpful. If it has, make sure you've smashed like, subscribe, and notification button and comment below for any other stretches you would like to see. And good luck on 90.3. Already looking forward to a Thursday night to find out what it's going to be. We'll see you next time. I'm the Downward Doug. You've been awesome.